We the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car. And we decide where it should go and by what route and how fast. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Hey everybody, welcome once again to yet another episode of Two Noobs Talking. It is episode 87 with me, of course, or my two good co-hosts and compatriot friends, whatever. Um, John Tracy and Steve Murray. I am Matt Craig. We're happy to have you with us. John, how... Happy to be here. I... <laughs> You're being paid to be here. What the hell? I know. You have to write that in the contract, Johnny? What yeah. the hell? Damn. Anyway, uh, what's what's going on, John? How are you doing, man? Everything I'm good? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Uh, Steve, though, uh, apparently the Denny Dinette uh, lawsuit, I think, is now going to be absolute legit because he was legit injured. Yes. Uh, you know, at the time of his recording, you know, the shoulder separation, something like this, that, right? Dislocation. Dislocation. It's actually worse than separation. Oh, good Lord Almighty. Denny but Dinette he is on the mend. The Very fortunate. I think the Denny Dinette, you're going to go through with that lawsuit, right? With Denny Dinette. I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> well, this, this, in, this legitimate injury complicates that because now it's hard to oh. prove what caused what. <laughs> <laughs> for, for all those people out there, it's probably not a good idea to try to jump over a goaltender. Yeah. Yeah, on roller skates. That doesn't. This, really is, this is coming from the guy that used to tell me that on, on a weekly basis. <laughs> This, this was this was the most excruciating pain I think I've ever felt. Yeah. Uh, but I was told by a teammate when I got up and skated back to the bench, he was like, you know, LeBron would have been, you know, curious as to why you were able to get up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, seriously. Down. What's that, son? What was that? LeBron still be down. Yeah, he would. They would have live coverage of LeBron sneaking off <laughs> at, at this point, and it yeah. happens how long ago? <laughs> exactly. That would definitely be a breaking Looking live. LeBron moved. <laughs> moved. Look, too funny. So, guys, episode eighty-seven. Of course, who wore the episode number of the city of Philadelphia? How about we lead off with tight end Brent Selleck, Super Bowl champion, goes out in the high note. Right? I mean, my God, and a great tight end, one of the all-time best, I think. Certainly ranks right up there uh, with the city of Philadelphia. Yeah, I love Brent Selleck. Yeah. Um, I remember he had like one good catch against uh, the, I think it was the Vikings in the NFC Championship game. Kind of got everything started. I think it was a 20 yard reception, first down or whatever. We've had so many good tight ends. They just all blur together. And they just do. Yeah. The miracle at the Meadowlands with uh, Vic, you know, he hit, he hit Selleck in the wide open in the middle. Giants just didn't play any defense. Great, great job. Uh, that kind of deal. Then we also had, yeah, we also had Todd Pinkston. Um, all six foot two, 150 pound Todd Pinkston running around out there. Um, guy could go deep, could run with the best of them, you know. I think he he had a bad rap here. Oh yeah, he yes. did. They used to call him Stinkston until To got here and we saw what he could actually do. Yeah. Yeah. And then nobody could nobody could run with him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then uh, a big shout out to uh, to Doc Page, who we had way back. In episode 51, go throw that up in the card uh, for you in the upper uh, right corner of the screen. Yeah, check that episode out. That yeah, that's a great episode. That's uh, John me interviewing him in regards to COVID back then. But Claude Humphrey played for the Eagles, also played enormously for the Falcons, starred in the Dukes of Hazard. recently passed away. He did play for the Eagles, though, for three seasons, I think, three or four seasons, I think, and uh, got to the NFC Championship game, obviously won that game, and then went to the Super Bowl with us. So that was really, really cool. I mean, well, the Dukes of Hazard part is how Doc comes in. Absolutely, yeah, of course. And then finally, guys, Donald Brashear, uh, big, big enforcer of the Flyers way back when in the you know bygone era, I guess you could say, of Flyers hockey in the early 2000s. You Can't know, that. he was more than uh, an enforcer, though. Like, Hell yeah, an enforcer is a guy who, you know, they go out and play probably five minutes a game. And they get maybe one goal a year that like bounces off their ass and into the net, and they get credit for it, even though they really had nothing to do with it. Do with it, yeah. Other than parking their body in front of the net, Donald Bashir could play a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we looked at his stats. He was he was putting anywhere between six to ten goals a season, mm -hmm. which 
it is not bad for a, a fourth line guy. You're going to take that every day of the week. Absolutely. He was, he was a bit of an energy player too. Yeah. Like he, he played with high level of energy. So he, he would get down and muck and grind. If he had to kick your ass, he had absolutely no issue with that. Yeah. Like he was, that was, he was great at that, but he was yeah. also, I, re- I can just in my head, like thinking about him, remember a couple of times where he would take the puck over the line and it was like a legitimate either pass or shot that you were like, oh man, he just missed or, oh, he just scored. Like what the hell? Like yeah. <laughs> way more than most guys that beat people up. Like, oh yeah. Mark. <laughs> well, you know something we're about Markov, uh, you know that kind of deal, kind of like what was he a bad influence, Johnny? What was bad that? influence on Danny Markov. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, our, our you know our uh, fondest memory of Brash as Flyers fans probably comes from yeah the Ottawa Senators Flyers t- uh, what was March, March two thousand four yeah and it wasn't even the initial fight; it was the fact that he came out of the locker room to try to fight again. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I fell in love with. That that was probably the best part of that entire thing, and uh, I, I I think what what was most remarkable for me was looking at his career was the fact that he came back after the McSorley incident in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, stick to the face up against his temple, and then he's knocked out, and then lands onto the ice, and then his head ricochets off the ice with the helmet going fly. I mean, he was obviously completely concussed, knocked out, great. He had a seizure. He came back from that, and it was the same guy. That was the one thing that I think I... a damn good career after that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And it was just like, you want, you did not want to face him. You wanted him on the team, though. You definitely wanted him on the team. No and question. And it surely would be the, the, the POS that we're talking about when like he was a better than just an enforcer. Yeah. Maybe that's why McSorley was, you know, was jealous because the dude could play a little bit and kick his ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the fact that he wanted to fight him again in that entire incident and he was trying to tap him on the shoulder, according to McSorley, and we looked at the replay and it was like a full arm, two handed slash to his face. I mean, he come on. He glasses if he was tapping on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's a full. Go a little like, lower. <laughs> just a little bit off the beaten path. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Don Brashear was just, yeah, I, it was just, I, I'm always amazed guys with like guys that, okay, yeah, the reputation of like the fighter, but they could flat out play the game too. I mean, let's face it. And he was not, yeah, the reputation was of him getting like hundreds of penalty minutes was definitely preceded. But to Steve's point, the number of goals he scored too was incredibly valuable. Back then it was like, you get like your top two scoring lines, and then you have a checking line as your third. And then if anything got out of hand, you have your fourth. And yeah, for him to get like six to 10 goals in a year. And the Flyers' fourth line with him on it played a fair amount. He Mm -hmm. was not, he was, he was was not a, yeah, he was not a Jody Shelley type, you know, uh, know, enforcer. The important part of him coming to the Flyers was he made that team tougher. Yeah. Oh yeah. He just made that team as you saw with they you know, they didn't take they would have taken that, you know, prior teams would have never taken it to that level yeah. with Ottawa after a cheap shot. He made them he made them relevant in the in the uh the toughness game. Yeah. No up question. Up and down, up and down that lineup. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he would always stick up for his teammates, which was great. It's you can't ask him for anything better than that, that's for sure. All right, guys, so let's go ahead. Topic one, episode 87. And uh, since we like to talk about Elon Musk now for the last few <laughs> last few episodes, we've got another article, bbc.com. This is interesting. Yeah, Elon Musk declares end to remote working at Tesla. Tesla. So this is interesting. Um, apparently there was a, uh, a memo, internal memo, leaked to the press uh, Tesla boss Elon Musk has ordered staff to return to the office full time, declaring that remote working no longer acceptable. Um, people were kind of asking about, oh, so what, what's going on here? And he's like, well, you're required to work 40 hours per week in the office. If you don't show up, we will have assumed you have resigned, which is pretty strong language, uh, to say the least. Um, the email said staff should report to work at one of the uh, one of the company's main offices. "Quote: Not a remote branch office unrelated to the job duties." End quote. Um, 
there are, of course, companies that don't require this, but when was the last time they shipped a great new product? It's been a while. That's uh, Elon responding to a question uh, in regards to that. So Tesla has and will, con will create an actually manufacturer, the most exciting and meaningful products of any company on Earth. This will not happen by phoning it in, end quote. John, what are your thoughts? He's such an alien. On um, <laughs> Besides the, that. Uh, the, the, I don't... And he did say in there also, like, if people have ex, um, extreme circumstances, he he will review it and work with them, which is which is fine. But I don't I don't understand the whole. I think he's just trying to. It's clickbait. I think he's trying to get the. Oh, well, now we're not going to go remote. But I was the head of the game when we went remote. When you know COVID was happening, I think he's always trying to be that guy. And I I, I just I think. I honestly agree with that article. Mm -hmm. I think we're past that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a we need to look at work in a different way. Mm -hmm. We can't look at it the way we looked at it before. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't. I. I do. do what? So everybody's gonna be miserable at Tesla now. Mm -hmm. And two days later, he says in an interview that he wants to cut 10% of the salaries off of. That. Why do you oh. think he sends that email? Yeah. Interesting. Didn't hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. If you get these people to quit, I don't have to fire anybody. It's interesting. That's what I feel it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting here in the article, office, office occupancy in the U.S. right now is about 43%, according to data from Castle. Uh, Castle now. is a company that runs security cards, access systems at thousands of buildings across the country. So less than half of the buildings right now in, in the United States are being currently occupied by people working there. Um, we, of course, have had debates, all three of us, uh, talking about remote work back and forth. Uh, Steve, what are your initial thoughts on uh, Mr. Musk and his uh, policy change here? If, if he wants to have everybody back in the office 40 hours a week, um, that's his prerogative as a lawyer. And if he wants to do that, that's fine. To John's point, um, if he's going to force it, he's got to be prepared to lose some people. And if he needs to shift the salary, I guess, you know, looking at it that way, this probably was. Mm. He just, you know, he could have done it in a less douchey way mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know there's there's a way you could you could nicely say you know we would like everyone to come back 40 hours a week and not be a douchebag mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the language to it I, I think that's what like startled me when see when reading the article yeah it was like the language it was like yeah you know, it's... I, I, you're in the news all the time dude you haven't you haven't got woke to the fact of being nice gets you like we've seen it over and over again and it's the continuous and these are the people that are going to people aren't going to want to deal with this shit no you're seeing it already like this doucheness is it's annoying it's i don't want to look at it in my new like oh you're big tough you know tesla guy you're gonna bring everybody back to work guess what your company is going to get overtaken by someone that understands the way the world is working and not this antiquated dumb idea that we can go back after COVID, we can go back to the way it was. Hmm. It's just not, it's not in the cards. I don't think think he's not, uh, yeah, I don't think he's actually plugged in to what's been going on because he's not plugged in at all. I, you know, I, I, I work with clients all the time who, are at least partial remote and they're still putting out product they're Probably bringing out new things mm -hmm. this is you know you you don't need everybody in an office 40 hours a week no. to produce new stuff yeah no. uh, that's just him you know patting himself on the back which i can't do because of my dislocated shoulder. <laughs> um, you know for his product which by the way my 12 year old son we were behind a tesla one time in the school drop-off line and mm -hmm. it was one of those ones that had the yep. door that goes. Oh, that up. goes like a, yeah. And my 12 year old son goes, yeah. well, that's obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's different. It's the gold wing or whatever. 97% yeah. of the doors open, open this way. Yeah, exactly. Pretentious assholes open doors <laughs> this way. I love fucking George Lucas and Star Wars. Why'd all the fucking doors go up? <laughs> 
And back to the future. The DeLorean was a yeah. great car back then. Come on, Johnny. Um, I know. I love the DeLorean, but the DeLorean can be left alone. Yeah, it's exactly. Fine. It's yeah. Not, like there's nine. It was a fad. Of them driving around right now. Yeah, exactly. It was a fad. It was a it was a definite hit. That's for sure. I've probably seen six Ferraris in my life and two DeLoreans. This... I'm okay with that. I don't need every Tesla throwing a door out. I, I will admit to this, guys. I am a bit of a dinosaur. I, I will admit to that being the elder statesman of the three hosts here. I am a definite dinosaur. I, I have, have really... the complexion of a raptor. I, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have recently gone back to work five days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I don't mind the commute. I don't. I, ju- I just don't. I, I'm a creature habit. I have done it for 20 some odd years. And recent circumstances, I live in a condominium community and I had an upstairs neighbor with a two-year-old running around all the time during the day. So I had to basically do one of two options. One, either go upstairs and be an absolute jerk and an asshole and basically say, will you please knock this off? Otherwise I'm calling the cops. Or two, I get noise canceling headphones and put them over my ears and I just drown them out. I did the latter. Thank Mm -hmm. God. Um, now they've moved out. You're not that first guy. Exactly. I'm not the first guy. Thank God. I have seen though people be the first guy, uh, and it is an uncomfortable situation. No question about it. Um, you don't you don't like going up to a two year old and saying, "Stop being a two year old." Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Knock it off. Knock it off. Come on. You're two. You should be twenty. Come on. What's wrong with you? (laughs) You know that kind of a deal. Where's your driver's license? Where's your driver? What's happening? Job. But no, it's 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 interesting. Now that I've gone back, mm-hmm. the situation now is what has really been annoying to me has been well, there's been a recent spike in COVID cases, and we may or may not close the office again. And I'm sitting there kind of going like, "Will you please make <laughs> up <laughs> your mind on what you want to do with this office?" And, you know, and another part of me, too, would be like, okay, you need to foster business relationships in person. It's nice to see people. It's nice to talk to them. All that kind of stuff. Five, ten minute conversations aren't all that bad. Really are not all that bad. But I agree with both of you in regards to Musk. The CEO of a company is an ass. The way he was acting, it's going to cause me to stop and think, hey, wait a minute, you know. Okay, yeah, I understand the policy of going back, and I get it. But if I'm more productive at home, and I like being at home, I, I want to sign up for that. I, and I want to talk to my manager about that. No question. You can't force people once you've, oh. you've begged them to do it. You know what I mean? Oh, my God, mm-hmm. we have to do this because of this or this or this. You can't mm-hmm. then just be a dick and be like, oh, I'm just taking it away now. Yeah. And the production never changed. Like yeah. how would it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Now I will say this too. I think the he's managers, more of a dinosaur than you are, Matt. Because I, uh, he's thinking I that so. he can do it for an entire company. He's, it is he's his letting... company. Yes, he can do it, but what if he loses he's not gonna have a company? What if he loses his top people? If he loses Didn't ten he to fifteen quote? percent of his workforce, that's a problem. Didn't he have a quote in there about um, let people pretend to be working elsewhere mm-hmm. or something like that? Yeah. Uh, which yeah. which tells me his view is that every single person who's working remotely is just goofing off and not acting. Yeah. And, that's, and, that's, and that's, that's a problem a within world that world organization. Thing. If that is happening within his organization, that's a culture that's that not needs to be fixed, period. Yeah. Go ahead, Johnny. What are you going to say? I'm sorry. I'm talking over you. Go ahead. That does not make that a successful organization. It if does you not. Are, if you are managing under the pretense that everybody is fucking off, you're not, you are not successful because you know what? Half of them are fucking off and you're forgetting about the other half that aren't. Yeah. And you're chasing them all the time and you're not worried about the ones that... Because the, you foster the people that do the best work. That's that's what a manager's job is. It's to discipline the ones that aren't good. But yep, it, it's anic- it's 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 very old world thinking that you need to slave drive people and beat them over the head, keep them in one little box, and beat them over the head because they'll do your bidding. That's not true. Well, what it's all about think- communication too. Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. What makes you think if you bring these people back into the office that they're not going to be jerking around in the office? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good point. 
good point. Yeah, it's all about communication, right, guys, at the end of the day as well. And it's how the manager and the employee get along and make sure, A, the productivity matches that same level or improves it to that level when they're re working satellite or working remotely. But it's also having the mix of understanding where that person is coming, where both people are coming from, really. Yeah. And I'm talking to myself here, I'm preaching to the choir. There that's something go. that I have to remind myself of all the time. No, that's serious. That's something I have to remind myself all the time. Because also, my managers are also working on them on their own, basically. They're working remote, and they have to schedule the Zoom calls, and they have to, you know, they've got Zoom fatigue, or whatever the case may be. And it's like, okay, well, why don't we go out and grab a lunch or a bite to eat somewhere? You know, kind of just let it go. You know, let's just do that type of thing, rather than just... my my. My only fear is, like, if we just stick remotely and we're isolated all the time, that's not going to help us either. It's a balancing act. It really is Absolutely. at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think ultimately you need to give people the option. Because if you, if you go Elon's way, if you go full remote, you're going to end up losing people. Yeah. Um, good, potentially good people. Good pe That's where, where I feel. Why that. do you think there's a great resignation happening? Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna fail because they're not gonna want to deal with that. Because yeah. maybe they can go work for Microsoft and they can work in, you know, Idaho. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I want to work at Bill Gates. I could go, I, I can go really far away and work for a company. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe you're not doing the same thing Elon's doing, but you're probably ten times happier. Mm-hmm. And if that's what, and that's a metric right now, that mm -hmm. all companies are now focused in on how. How productive are you and how happy are you? Combination of the two. And if you're both, you're great. If you're unhappy, your productivity will go down. And that's just Absolutely. that's just the bottom line. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's the manager's job to then be able to go, well that was that was productive there. What changed? How did this set? Let's, let's figure out what's going on instead of Everybody get back to the office and 65% of you are going to be miserable and I don't care because I'm trying to cut 10%. Yeah. Because that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. <laughs> exactly. Gents, topic two. And uh, this is a very interesting article. Uh, it's a rare Fox News article. We pride ourselves not going Fox News all the time. But... <laughs> This one, Fox News a lot. this one we have to, since the last couple of weeks, we've been a little bit on DeSantis, and rightfully so, right? I mean, DeSantis has been kind of a fool going after First Amendment rights and all that kind of stuff. Well, let's go on the flip side here. Uh, Rebecca Jones, she was the darling of the liberal media going after DeSantis for all the Florida COVID manipulation data and all that kind of stuff. Well, it turned out that an investigation came into place. Rebecca Jones, the fired Florida health official. Um, so her claims uh, quietly fall apart last week. Jones has long claimed the Florida Department of Health manipulated COVID numbers at uh, DeSantis's behest to allow the state to reopen at the height of the pandemic. Uh, there was an Inspector General report, though. Michael Bennett uh, investigates whistleblower complaints, and they said that based upon an analysis of the available evidence, the alleged conduct, as described in the, by the complainant, did not happened did not occur yep. and so it basically kind of just fell apart by the wayside and no one's saying anything what a shock um gents covid has been such a hot button issue um throughout all no. of this yeah. <laughs> spoiler alert sorry <laughs> i don't know this... if our, i don't know if our audience knew that <laughs> I don't think anybody who has been watching us for a long time, listening to us for a long time, John, no, nah, no. Um, my, my question to both of you, and I guess I'll go to Mr. Murray on this one first. Uh, Steve, what do you, th how do we get past all of this with the manipulation of the data? And, you know, God, he went with you. That's a hard question. I mean, seriously. Yeah, really? Damn, man. What happened to softball? Well, first of all, you're, you're a Pennsylvania super lawyer. should throw that out there. 2022 Pennsylvania super lawyer up there. So he's come with street cred up here. Um, but, I mean, what do we do here? Like, what, what do you think would be the best part to try and mitigate this or try and, like, cut all of this nonsense out of it? Because this is not helpful, obviously, when you have a, an operative in there that it doesn't agree with what the governor is trying to do to open up his state during this pandemic. I mean, what do we do with this? Uh, I really don't know. Yeah. Um, 
there yeah. was there was so much incentive to minimize COVID either because you wanted to open the state like DeSantis or you didn't want to you wanted to look like you were controlling it like Cuomo mm -hmm. but on the other hand there was incentive to increase the rates um, you know for like hospitals because you get more funding if you had more COVID patients oh um, oh yeah you know, kind of like a dis dislocated shoulder just hurts you know it's just like oh, oh COVID <laughs> dislocated my shoulder um <laughs> Of its fault. <laughs> there, <laughs> there were so many incentives to, to manipulate the data, mm -hmm. and there's incentives to manipulate the data so you can control the narrative, just from a media perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea who the frig Rebecca Jones is yeah. or what this story was about because I didn't pay attention to stupidity like this. Yeah. Yes. And uh, if, if, what, if what is being said now is true, that she lied. To again control the narrative or prevent, I don't know. Yeah, that's it, a, basically, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, when, I when you're know. on, when you're on Chris Cuomo's show nine times, I think there's an issue there. That's that in and of itself is hilarious. Just yeah. Being on Chris Cuomo's show nine times is hilarious. <laughs> exactly. Because he only knows seven words. <laughs> how, do you his, how are you on his show for nine? My, okay, so John, my question is, is he more of a... A, B, C, E, F, G, and then you move on? And you move on? Is he more... You now, is Quiris more of a condescending piece of crap than his brother? That's my question yes. on that, but... <laughs> we, got, we, we have the top 16 tournament of the FOMOs coming up. Where, like, <laughs> There's 16 of them? Jesus. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> is terrible well in, in chris's she chris or douchey andrew which one wins in mm. chris's defense i don't think he killed anybody that's true uh, that's true cole has got man. bodies man he does she, that's the that's the ironic part about it is you know she's going on chris cuomo's show to talk about fudging covid data mm. downward and chris's brother was public enemy number one for that going on yeah exactly has a body count bigger than biggie smalls yeah <laughs> DePaul, depaul university journalism professor i love that jeffrey mccall said the establishment media is boosting of rebecca jones had less to do about getting covid data correct than it did about trying to discredit the santa so you don't say <laughs> The media narrative on DeSantis, this is uh, um, McCall talking, the media narrative on DeSantis was that he was recklessly mismanaging COVID while trying to reopen his state, and thus stories had to be pushed to support that theme. That's just so incredibly insidious. Um, the Jones saga fit that narrative nicely, so she became the media darling. Outfits like CNN, promoting her allegations, with insufficient support or vetting. That's a problem right there. You have to do a much better job, I think, vet these people out. Like, what? And that's on a news organization to do. Yes, you have freedom of the press, but you have a responsibility. We talked about that last week with the freedom of the press, you know, referencing back to the First Amendment, right, guys? I mean, at the end of the day, you have a responsibility as the press to not only report, but to vet these people and to say, okay, are you an operative? Are you, you know, what what is your end goal here? Like, is there a legitimate... Is this a legit thing? Because my reputation is going to be also taking a hit if this is not correct. It just seems like it was... We'll just... get into that a little bit later, huh? <sighs> yeah, we, we, we definitely will get into that a little bit later. But that's, yeah. where, that's where we've lost... We've talked about this a million times before. This yeah. is where we've lost the thinking of reporting the truth instead of just reporting and out. We'll figure it out later. Yeah, so it's, we'll it's being it first, later. not being right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we found this woman who's a whistleblower who says DeSantis is lying about all these numbers. Let's get her on before some other network breaks the story first. Instead Without checking, of, like, where is your evidence, lady? Yeah. Instead not a scientist. She was not. Interrogation to figure out if it's true or not. Yeah. She was not a scientist. She was a data mapper and I had a master's degree in geography. I don't know how you get a master's degree in geography. That's interesting. That I. She's how also a conspiracy a, theorist. And, okay, whatever. The, the health director. I don't know. She was the health director. Yeah. That's what she, I think. Yeah. Right. She. Wasn't she, that... she was part of the Florida. Uh, 
uh, fired health official. So she, yeah, she was part of the Florida Department of Health. So she was a health official. Yeah. <laughs> she was a health With official. With a master's degree in help. geography. She could help them find Las Vegas. <laughs> I don't know how you get a okay, master's okay. degree in geography. Like, what? what is the absolute, you know what I mean? Like, how does that happen? I don't get I'm that. I'm sure someone that <laughs> listens has a, and we're not trying to be mean to that. I can't figure out how I a am. master's degree in <laughs> geography has anything to do with having a job in, like. In the Florida Department of Health. Class if you're health. teaching, if you're teaching geography, yes, a master's degree in geography would be very useful. Yeah, but if you're be working in the Department helpful. of Health. That's totally different. That's what story. I'm saying. Like, but how what, did you did hire she to locate that? the places that other people needed to go? Was that how it worked? Maybe. I don't know. It just seems yeah. odd that someone with a data manipulation gets played like, and she has a separate degree in a science that I is think, completely I don't think antithetical. The title was data, I don't think the title was data manipulation. I think it was data mapping. That's true. You're, you've got a Freudian data system. mapping. Sorry, yeah, that's right. <laughs> there, exactly. Cash. Thank you. <laughs> She was um, data manipulating with her data mapping, with her non-health degree. Like, she didn't even... Okay, so it's a little bit further on. Last sentence of the article, I will say that... Let's just put this here. She was officially fired for insubordination. Personnel files uploaded by National Review uh, revealed repeated infractions documented by her superiors, including posting on social media regarding data and web product owned by the Department of Health that she works on without permission of management or communication. So she basically went rogue. Uh, she potentially exposed personal data on the Geo Geographic Information System, or GIS dashboard she managed. Oh, that's so why that's she how she got... Ah. Uh, so it's... it's no health degree. I, no. She didn't even take a class. Like, to me, that's got to be an epidemiologist, guys. Honest to God. I mean, this is... I, if anything, it it's got to be all epidemiology. Person. It needs to be more than one person. Yes. Yeah. It needs to be a team of people that team of people to do it, and yeah, can work it out, not just yep. one person. You need yeah. you need the doctors to actually get the counts right. Yes. Yeah. And then you need someone who's good with numbers. Yes. To report them in proper formats that can be useful. Yeah. For trends and and, and data analysis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of like the N kind of like the NFL does. Like the NFL. Kind of. The group of people with their statistics, I'm saying. Yeah, I know, I know. Just... That's an answer. They have different categories. That's how the health department should probably work. Yeah. How you have a bunch of people that know a bunch of stuff about the stuff that you're actually doing. And then you can present it in a way where people can understand it instead yep. of not understanding it, you lying about it, us hating you, not hating him, but hating you, but then hating him. And then an article comes out six months later that you're an idiot and he's yeah. an idiot, but he's not an, as much of an idiot. But <laughs> if you would have told the truth and we would have never known who you were, and he <laughs> might not be as much of an idiot. See, COVID right there in a little bubble. I love it. I love it. I mean, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You wanted your 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. And now, a word from our sponsor. How much time do you spend proofreading your emails before smashing that send button? Either it's too much or you are sending emails with unprofessional typos. You need to download SpellEase, the newt ape that revines the tits of your email before it gobs put suggestion, hellbound charges, and clarmicles for basic spellinge ears through complexion gravitational strings. Never wart agog about the receding tanking. You're me a dumbo because you're spurt bed. Download spell ease and start baking your busybody more effervescent toodles. Well, oh my God, uh, Steve, one, are you okay reading that terrible copy? My God, I don't know what happened there. Uh, dude, I, I read that word for word off the page. <laughs> Look, I, you know, John, I what do you, what do you think here, man? I mean, do we keep him as a sponsor or what? You know, Ick blue burb. <laughs> oh my gosh, qwerty keyboard, too funny. Anyway, um, so let's go into I the. Probably would not use them to check my spell check my emails. I, I, no, I would not. No, I would not. 
Um, but let's dive into it, guys. Uh, we've been kind of avoiding this topic for quite a while. Um, for obvious reasons, because it's, best. Yeah, it's been so crazy. It's probably one of the wildest trials we've seen in quite some time. The topic three is, of course, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial in Virginia uh, that recently was settled. And, of course, uh, it wasn't really settled. Johnny Depp won. Legit. Uh, and legit... Uh, one, because Amber Heard is a lunatic um, and had just probably one of the worst um, lawyer uh, group that I think she could have ever hired. Either that or she's equally as incompetent. I don't know. But, uh, Steve, let's talk about this. Um, how important are lawyers uh, and good ones? <laughs> be my first question <laughs> uh, getting a good lawyer is very important uh, this <laughs> trial would be exhibit a i think uh, now having having a nut job as a client doesn't help you as an attorney to do your mm. job properly yes of course i see john uh making a face so i <laughs> see he's... My, my dog just stepped on the bait <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be with you guys in a second. Just... <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. This, I, I, I started paying attention probably halfway through. Hmm. Um, I would listen to it actually purely from a practitioner standpoint because you don't often get an opportunity uh, to see a live televised civil trial mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. to see how other attorneys perform how they formulate their questions how they make their arguments subjections all that kind of stuff so from mm -hmm. that perspective for me it was very interesting to see mm -hmm. but as anyone else who i think was paying attention you know initially i was just paying attention to the attorneys but you sort of get sucked into the whole thing yeah because it was so over the top yeah, that's the. Yeah. Uh, it. <laughs> this was one of the most bizarre things I think I've ever seen. <laughs> but, but to bring it back to your original question, I, I do not think her lawyers did a good job, and maybe Amber Heard was part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But the, the the best example I can give you, uh, Amber Heard was on the stand, and she got totally annihilated on cross-examination by uh, one of Depp's attorneys. I think her name was Camille Vasquez or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally destroyed on cross. Mm. Her lawyer, uh, Elaine something or other, mm. gets back up to do a redirect examination and was objected to Here we go. almost every single question. Oh. Which is a I... little bit unusual. <laughs> but the thing that got the thing that really bothered me was she was losing on objections because she was making leading questions mm. which is a form of the question and if you can't turn your question from leading to non-leading mm. i have to question your skills as a lawyer as a lawyer Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and this was this was not like objection leading. Okay, continue. This was objection leading sustained. Next question. Like, and and, and she couldn't, and she would go like two or three questions, <laughs> trying to get the same stuff, oh. and it would again be objection leading sustained. Next question. Wow. And it got so bad. Il Elaine, whatever her name is, mm. was like, oh, I'm 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 trying, you know. And and Depp's lawyer was like, I, I objection. I, I don't even know. <laughs> what like what we're doing here but yeah just so you can understand leading question is basically a yes or no mm -hmm. where you are leading the um witness mm -hmm. to where you want them to go mm -hmm. and when it's your witness obviously that's a bad thing because mm -hmm. the attorney is basically testifying and the witness is just like yep yep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so a leading question is like and you went to the bathroom after the fight didn't you Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, objection leading. Where did you go after the fight? Well, I went oh. to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, even, or, or even even simpler. Okay, what happened after the fight? Mm. <laughs> went to the yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Now, um, if mm. is it her 
poor work as a lawyer that caused this? Or was it the fact that she had no idea if she asked an open-ended question where Amber was going to go with the answer? Hmm. That might have played part of it, too. Yeah. yeah. So it can't. It may not totally be on the lawyer, but it, oh. it was baffling to watch that exchange. Just amazing. Just amazing to see the incompetence. I think that's the one thing that really got to me, too. John, though, this was very interesting, too, because we have... Talking about the press, we talked about that, of course, last with Rebecca Jones. Now this, the Washington Post may end up being, like, held liable, I think, in regards to this, because they published an Amber Heard opinion piece in relation to this, because she was part of the Me Too movement back then, and Johnny Depp did, did, Johnny Depp did this to me, did that to me, da 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 what what are your thoughts on that in and of itself? Like, are they going to be held accountable? Washington Post, I mean. I I think the question is, well, should they be? And I think should Steve they be? Made the, Steve made the best comment uh, talking about the Washington Post in pre-production, where he was like, maybe Johnny Depp just didn't want to deal with the real lawyers. Um, <laughs> so he went this way just to get it over with, which yeah. might be that might maybe they won't be held accountable, but that might. My serious question is, should they be held accountable? They mm. did, like we were talking about in the, in the previous thing, they did publish something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, should they be held accountable? I think so. I absolutely think, maybe not, maybe not by Johnny Depp himself, but maybe isn't there some kind of... Um, do, do the press have anything in which they I, I have something in my work contract that I have to be a decent human being? Mm. Like, don't they, doesn't the press have that? I don't believe there's any criminal defamation uh, laws, um, I don't think. Uh, but in any event, you have to have somebody willing on the other side to push the case. And if, if Depp didn't include them in with Amber Heard, mm-hmm. I don't think he's likely to pursue them. I mean, he's by this trial effectively been made whole, I would say, mm-hmm. um, by the damages award and the, the, the truth coming out as he said he wanted. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know what incentive he would have to now go after the post. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, I just pulled up a CBSNews.com article here, guys. Amber Heard was found liable for defaming Johnny Depp in an op-ed published in the Washington Post, and Depp was found liable for a statement his attorney made to the Daily Mail claiming her claims, or calling her claims a hoax, a jury decided Wednesday. Jurors awarded Depp a total of $15 million in damages per $2 million. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yeah. Well, I mean, and actually, that's what the jury awarded, and then the judge actually knocked it down. Oh, uh, did they? I think mm-hmm. Depp's award was only like 10, ended up being 10, 10 million, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That makes sense. Though. Why Why are you going to give some to this and something? We just fucking round it up. Yeah. I, t- <laughs> I mean, we're, it, we're dealing with an idiot and a drug addict. Like, get him out, get him out of the public eye as quick as you can. I, yeah. I, I, that's, the, that's the really sad part about this. I don't think anybody comes out of this looking good. No. I mean, I, I know, I know, Depp has now effectively cleared his name as far as like domestic abuse charges. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the stuff that came out during the trial, oh, yeah. he's he's got a lot of problems. Yeah. He sure does. Yeah, um, yeah. He's also Just... super rich and doesn't need to do it. <laughs> but yeah, that's money can't always buy you happiness, though, Johnny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Money can't buy you happiness. <laughs> No, maybe he'll and, learn. To, maybe he will learn not to date a lunatic. Yeah. And it was because she's you know, just something else. I don't. I don't know what's wrong with her. I mean, she's just a lost soul, really. She's cuckoo for cocoa. Oh yeah. She has a problem. She would admit no wrongdoing during this trial, even though it became stunning. clear from the actual evidence mm-hmm. that there was something there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've learned in my career from doing mock juries and things, juries will be much more lenient on you mm-hmm. if you are willing to admit. Yeah, if you're truthful. You, yeah. If you're truth, if you're willing to admit, yes, I made a mistake. I did, you know, yeah, I hit him. Okay, that doesn't mean he didn't hit me. But if you're not willing to admit the obvious mm-hmm. things, we're not going to take anything you tell us Say, seriously. Seriously, exactly. Yeah, that's a great. And thing. that's my thing with the post is the post didn't see that coming. 
Like, that, another interesting... Someone didn't sit down with her after she wrote it, after they read it, after they... Because the, the production process isn't just she handed them a fucking letter and they fucking... But if that's the way it is, they should be disbanded immediately. <laughs> kind of goes back to vetting, John. That's what it's Nobody to. sat down. Nobody with some kind of journalism degree mm. sat down and was like, this could get really hairy for... Like, oh, maybe even a lawyer for the Washington Post. Like, this could get hairy because she's batshit crazy. Like, nobody <laughs> <did> that. <laughs> like, nobody. That's but interesting. Everybody assumed that she's normal. It goes back to vetting, John. That's the whole point, right? But I mean, this, this was an op-ed piece, though. Yeah, I don't I don't know whether, you know, you get uh, the opinions of so and so are not necessarily those of, you know, you this can, program. But still, that still it's still going to there's still going to be some stink on it. Hmm. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yep. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, the, I mean, another I'm thing not came out of this trial Post is terrible. But like, yeah. just... another thing that came out of this trial wasn't that just she was crazy. Like some of the witnesses themselves were. Oh. Her, she had one expert witness who evaluated. I shouldn't even say he evaluated. He concluded from watching video of Johnny Depp that he had a narcissistic tendency or something along that line, and this was all intended to lead to. Well, he has these personality disorders, therefore he's an abuser. This dude looked like he rolled out of bed like <laughs> five minutes before a trial. His hair was like all over the place. He's looking making like, these weird. He's like. Looking like, <laughs> looking like Boris Johnson in the rain. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> That's exactly what it reminded me of. He's on this bender for like two weeks. And he, oh, God, I got to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! And just to, I'm gonna defend Johnny Depp on one thing. Go for it. He's a fucking actor. Yeah. Like, of course you're gonna see different sides of him. That's what he does for a living. Yeah. He changes his personality to make you believe it. He's one of the better ones at it. Oh yeah, one of the all-time greats. Really, just have to think about it. But yeah, oh my gosh, that world, guys. The whole Hollywood world is just so bizarre and weird. And you have people it flock to, to it. People want to be celebrity. It go away. <laughs> it's like, no, you want to just that was... live your life. Don't go down this road. My God. That was another really hysterical thing from the trial was. Yeah. So after Amber Heard's side rested, Johnny Depp got rebuttal yeah. to try and rebut things that her witnesses had testified. So mm-hmm. um he called a bunch of people like Kate Moss testified because Amber Heard had said something about, yeah, I heard you threw Kate Moss down the stairs and Kate Moss comes in for three minutes and goes, he didn't throw me down the stairs. Um, <laughs> and, but so he, he, he had an, he had a train of witnesses come in mm-hmm. and this Elaine woman again, mm-hmm. she would start off her cross examination of each one of these. So you, uh, you know, this trial is being broadcast on television, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're you're just here to get your 15 minutes of fame, aren't you? And it's like <laughs> that. I I know, I know. Bias is one thing you can try to pull out to discredit a witness, but like that's gonna be your main like attack. And it it came back to haunt her. Yeah. That TM, they called a TMZ guy mm. who had something to do with the release of the video of Johnny Depp breaking a kitchen counter. Mm-hmm. And the, they called him basically to. Not in so many words, but basically demonstrate that Amber Heard leaked that to them. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so Elaine gets up and she does the same thing. Oh, so you you know that uh, we're being televised, right? Well, I, I know there's cameras. And so you just want to get your 15 minutes of fame. And, and he, this guy, Stoneface, goes, well, you know, I'm actually taking a risk here because TMZ doesn't want me, you know, disclosing sources and, and whatnot. Um, but I could say the same thing about you taking on Amber Heard as a client. You wanting to get your 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> she is flabbergasted. She goes, oh, well, that's rather argumentative, isn't it? And he goes, no, it's actually pretty logical to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there is one thing you oh. learn as an attorney for cross-examination is yeah. don't ask a question. Mm. Don't know the answer. Answer to two. And that is a terrible question yeah. when you don't know how that's going to come back. It's such sound advice for any of the lawyers that might be listening or you know, watching us or talking about that. That's such sound advice because you're right. Yeah, because it could be turned 
to your point, Steve, 180 degrees back to you, and you're like, whoa. You don't realize you the power watch, of that question. Wow. If you want to watch a good cross-examination, watch uh, Miss Vasquez mm. uh, do hers. She did very well. There you go. She did very well for Johnny Depp. There you go. Um, Elaine was not so good. Oh, my gosh. It's too funny. Too funny. All right, guys, fourth topic, and this one finally is a little bit different. I love getting away from all the politics and all the <laughs> Amber trial, and oh my God, we've got a special tournament cooked up by John. John, I'm going to let you go ahead. What do we got here, man? It looks like we got a wheel and everything here on screen. Yes, we have a wheel because uh, seating this thing would have been impossible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all three of us. So what I decided is this, this is the first round wheel. This is all the Flyers jerseys from 1983 to now with stadium and uh, winter classic jerseys included randomly, Matt, you will start randomly. Pseudo randomly. Yes. Yeah. Pseudo -randomly. <laughs> Whatever this wheel says, we're going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it. I will give it a spin for Matt's first choice. Okay, cool. So let's get it. Bankrupt. That's hilarious. Look at that. Okay, so 2000. So Matt, you have. I have to wait for that animation. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you have 2008 to 2010 versus. Okay. <laughs> I love this. The drum rolls. Okay. Going 2016, up 2017. 17. Oh, the 50th anniversary. Okay. okay. All right. What is, your, what is your choice? So looking at it, uh, 28, uh, 2008 to 10, you had the, that's a sports bra jersey, but they introduced the orange, the first orange, like okay. kind of the retro orange ones. And then in 16, 17, uh, you had the gold uh, you know, the alternate, um, with the 50th the anniversary ones white with the gold. Yeah. Now uh, I will admit, um, the, I did not like the gold at all. Uh, okay. and I had, I, I just wasn't a big fan. You have orange, black, white, and then gold. No, doesn't work. Doesn't work. I don't know what, what was going on there. I know it was 50th anniversary. I get it, but it, swung a miss with me so i i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hit the 28 to 10 look i hate to say the sports bra but it's got to be the sports bra jersey going forward moved on john moved um on. the co the concussion spotter has spotted matt for evaluation for a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna take him off the ice all right steve you are up now grade one concussion by the way <laughs> all right let's go let's see what you get here all right <laughs> All right. 2019 Stadium Series. Steve and I were at that game. Yes, we were. By that, yeah, so. Nice one. All right. That is going up against. <laughs> huh? The 2017 18. Okay. 18. So this is the the Adidas Adi Zero. Yep. So just so yeah, I'm gonna we'll flash. I guess we'll flash the jer the jerseys will be up here. Yeah. When the wheel gets down to one, do we still have to spin it? <laughs> <laughs> when it gets um, down to two. So what are you out. thinking, Steve? You got the 2017-18. That's where you have a carryover from 16-17. You have the orange and the white. Yeah, that's, that's, been there, that's been their that's been their look pretty consistently. It was just it turned into an Adidas jersey. Yep. Yep. Um and then of course the stadium there was series much games. difference. Yep. The stadium series game, I don't think I've made any um dispute that I disliked this jersey. <laughs> uh, there is absolutely no white on it. So you the it's difficult to read. Yeah. Like on the ice. Oh, we were complaining about that all the time when we were up there in the upper nosebleeds of uh, Lincoln Financial Field, weren't we? Yeah. Who are they? What's going yeah, this, on? Is this, that true? <laughs> this looks like one of those jerseys like your your bar league team yep. wants to get, but they can't afford like the three colors, so they have to go with the yep. two colors. <laughs> this is what you come up with. 
Yeah. So I'm going to go with the 20, was it 17, 18? Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm going that. Okay, cool. All right, Johnny. All right, Matt, you are up again. Okay, here we go. No bankrupt. No bankrupt. No bankrupt. <laughs> okay. Right. 2007, 2008. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, look at that. That is now. Here's like the creep into the one. Steve stopped him. From... <laughs> the 2014 to 16. Uh, kit. Yes. So this one had, they dusted off the old winter classic from 2012. Mm-hmm. And to Steve's third, point, right? yeah, as a third. Uh, they kept the, the home and away uh, as the old school look. Uh, in 2007 and 8, that was full sports bra. So I am going to. Looking at the two, I'm going to go 2014 to 16 because they dusted off the old, the uh, the uh, the Winter Classic. Yeah, so 2014, 16 will move on there. Nice. All right, Steve. You, you wait, wait, up. wait, wait. You are picking them just because they dusted off the old Classic and not because they had <laughs> 2007, 8 had the bra. Yeah, pretty much. Damn. Yeah. And Great what? two concussion. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick out of this. <laughs> I mean, it's oh. hard. Yeah, what are you going to do? Anyway, go well, ahead. At least he didn't advance the 708. That's true. Yeah. All right, Steve. Let's see what you get. All right. Something good. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. 97 to 01. Oh, yeah, yeah baby. All, all right. The first black holder in Jersey. All right. What's the, the opponent? <laughs> the 2017 Stadium Series in Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's the all black Correct. with yeah, black That's numbers. Right. All right. You're one versus Nine. 16 seed here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So 97 to 2001 had the classic orange jersey yes. with the white white shoulders, yeah. uh, the white numbers, and the orange mm-hmm. um, body, yeah. which is phenomenal. Oh. Phenomenal. That's also when they introduced the black third jersey with the white shoulder. Oh. It was basically the, the orange jersey, but it was black instead of orange. Yeah, they're the all right. Yeah. Oh. Um, absolutely phenomenal jerseys. Yes. Mm. Now let's look at the 2017 Stadium Series jersey. Not good. As bad <laughs> as the 2019 Stadium Series jersey, <laughs> this one was worse. You had black numbers mm. on a black background. Yeah. How wow. the hell are you supposed to read that? With black oh, lettering, by I'm the way. I'm trying too. right now. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. I know the le- the numbers had a white outline, but that did not help on camera, in person, <laughs> whatever. I I can't stand these 2017 stadium jerseys. I wish they would go away. So I'm advancing 97 to 2001. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Nice. All right, All right Johnny. Matt, you're- you're up for the next the next first round matchup. Let's do it. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. The 2010 Winter Classic. Oh, my gosh. All right. That's Who's that going to be up interesting. Again? The 2010 to 14. <laughs> so, okay. So this is interesting because the 2010 to four, uh, 2010 winter classic, it was the white with your orange going straight down. Uh, it was a very clean classic look. Loved it. Black nameplate. Black nameplate. Yeah. You could read the, the, the names. You could see the numbers. The numbers were orange on the white. It was beautiful. Uh, the 2010 to 2014, they put them as the road jerseys, the white road yep. with mm-hmm. your orange at home. And I got to, this is hard. I got to say, though, I think what pushes it over the top for me is the orange jerseys at home. So I'm going to advance to 2010-14 in a very close call. 2010-2014 will move on. 
it's close. Uh, and I think well, it's only, the same jersey. <laughs> it is. It's virtually the same. It is I think the what, same. It's not virtually. It is. Well, okay. But what, what hurts is the 2010, they didn't win in that jersey in Boston. It would have been great if they had won the game, you know, and they had the lead in that game. They coughed up the lead against the Bruins then. But, yeah, 2010-14, we'll move on. All right. So there you go. All right, ready, Steve? Marco Sturm. Now we get down Okay, 2002. Two to seven. Okay. All right. Is going to face. Uh, I was waiting for them to pop up. Uh, 2018 till now. So the 2018 to now has the 2017 Stadium Series as their alternate. That's jersey. right. Mm-hmm. Your 2002 to seven basically had an alternate jersey that had the, I guess you could say the, the Flyers logo, but it had gray in it. Would probably be I'm the best. Call one. it silver. Call it the silver. Yeah. yeah. That mm-hmm. was the first. That was the first alternate orange, correct? Like a legit alternate uh, alternate orange jersey. Yeah. Yeah, I think that yes, it was the first time they right. had an alternate orange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those well, that's because shooters, that's because right? the the that's because the road. I forget when did they. The they road was some black. Point, white was the road was black. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was the it was um, the come up. It's from when they went just with the white and black in mm-hmm. in two thousand one two thousand two. They then brought the orange back in. Yep. And ran with it for quite a while. And they did. Yeah. Yeah, but I I seem to recall the Flyers wearing those black jerseys in 04 at home they again. might have yeah they might have every once in a while they probably threw them on and i think i think somewhere in the tampa in between, series they did i in think tampa, somewhere in between 02 and 04 they put the color jerseys back to home yep i think so yeah i think like you're, i think you're right you're right on it yep. could have um, also been like a sunday matinee stuff that we remember where they were wearing like no that that would have been the third jersey okay um all right well so the 0207 had the classic white, the classic black, mm-hmm. and the the funky orange, which I know Matt is not a huge fan of. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I I like it. Mm. I don't uh, find it at all. Like oh, I, I, eight, I like the silver in there. Yeah. 18 is the current or 18 to present has the nice orange retro, the white with the black nameplate, but it has the god awful stadium series jersey, so that automatically kicks it out. Oh wow. <laughs> so you're going to 02 to 07 then? 207. 0207. Right. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Johnny? Shock. <laughs> <laughs> I, that I was already going to write the other thing down. All right, Matt. Let's do it. Oh, okay. We're just talking about those. 2001 to 02. Okay. Talk a little bit about that. Go ahead. Against the reverse retro. So this is interesting. 01 to 02, you the orange jersey was completely retired. So you had the white with your orange uh, shoulder pad type of thing with the black outline. And then I believe the road at that time was all black. It was basically they went away from you know making that the alternative to the solid mm-hmm. black at home or something along those no lines. No orange, yeah. No orange at all. The reverse retro was similar it's kind of weird it's an orange background with a bl- with black shoulders white trim and you have black numbers with white it's it's very blinding um it was very striking i guess you could say um it was like a you know it was a jersey concept kind of gone wrong you know we kind of went over like jersey concepts before and other other jerseys before guys i'm pretty I think sure this, we discussed this one too yeah like this mm, not feeling this one uh, I think I'm going to go 0102. 0102. Only because you've got you've got you still have the black jerseys with the you know the white lettering on the back and that looks really sharp. So I like nice. the 0102. Yeah. Nice. Steve without spinning. <laughs> why, why, why can't we spin? <laughs> oh, okay. The 
shocker. The, the, the toy. <laughs> Now remove it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it could be. Gee, I wonder what it could be. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but it was one we grew up with. Uh, yeah, exactly. Up. Eighty-three to ninety-seven. What do you think? Uh, there, right, Steve. Right. Uh, eighty-three, ninety-seven. So we had the old classic orange with the white shoulder, mm-hmm. uh, and the obviously the reverse home white. Um, and then this is against the 2012 Winter Classic, right? It yeah. is, yeah. Uh, I, I liked the 2012 Winter Classic jerseys. I thought they were nice. You were uh, there for that game as well, yeah? I was for, there for that game, which oh. they lost. Ugh. The jerseys were good, though. Oh, the, the jerseys, jerseys were nice, but I don't think they're better than the, the old school orange. Oh, no. Agreed. Yeah, okay. And it's a it's deeper... The, the 83 to 97, it was a deeper orange. You are correct. Mm-hmm. The, the the winter classic jersey was kind of a later mm-hmm. uh, hue. I, I don't know the technical. No, 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 you're right. The hex code. There is two different hex codes. The one that you were looking at was the newer version of the flyers. There you go. If we were to do the older. It was a just a tiny bit, hmm. tiny bit different color. Nice. You replaced an F with a zero. Yeah, it's like it's it's, almost, it's a number. It's not even like it's like FF, and then there's a bunch of numbers. Uh, it's no, like instead of three, it was two. Wow. So I mean, it, it's close. It's close. It's, yeah. Interesting. It's close. All right. But... Well, I'm advancing 83 to 97. Yep. Nice. Yep. So we're gonna start back to Matt here. Yeah. We got 2017, 18. Mm-hmm. First, 1997 to 2001. Um, is that what we have? Because I have 2014, 16 going against 97, 2001. But okay, I'll no, go that with you. Was, that it, it gets flipped. It oh, flipped. got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's 97, 01, and w- w- sorry again, Johnny. 2017, 18. 1997, 2001. I got to go 97, 01. Again, the black all New jersey just m- makes it for me, guys. I, I just find that to be the coolest sharpest looking church and of course You're really like, not getting an argument out of me i know you have cleared con- you have clear concussion protocol oh, thank you i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> we go to 2008 to 2010 okay. first 2014 to 16. uh well duh I, I, it's 14 <laughs> to 16. it's got the 2012 winter classic alternate and the the good orange Home and yep. the the uh, the white from 2010 Winter Classic. There you go. And oh, oh eight to ten. Even though it had the same orange jersey as an alternate, mm. had the black and the white bras, which were terrible. So <laughs> get rid of out, them. Out with the boobs. <laughs> <laughs> we supposed. Thank God, I cleared concussion protocol for God's sakes. <laughs> All right, Matt. We are yep. on to the next round or okay. the next set in this round. Yep. 2002 to 2007. Okay. Versus the 83 to 97. Oh, man. Okay. Um, I grew up with 83 to... Yeah, I grew up with 83 to 97. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm looking at the... I'm still, like, I have the, the alternate... The Fort, I have like a Forsberg alternate one um, of the 2 to 07 jerseys. But when I when I think back to when I first became a fan of the Flyers in, you know, when I was back then, 84, 85, they wore those jerseys. I fell in love with them. I loved them. I thought they were great. I, I got to advance the old school. 84 to 97, man. They just, to me, were the coolest looking jerseys. Ever. I'm actually I'm actually surprised that that alternate orange mm. was lasted five years. I could swear it was. I would not have called that. Yeah, I would agree with you, Steve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I didn't realize right. it was that long. Me too. Getting into getting we're getting close here, Steve. Mm-hmm. You've got ten to fourteen. Okay. First o one o two. Who? Ooh. So o one o two is the one where you have the white and then the black all you know, black. Do not have the orange. But nothing. No yeah. Alternate. Mm-hmm. Um. And your ten to fourteen is exactly reversed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no black at all. Orange and white. 
think I'm gonna go ten fourteen. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, okay. I love the black in O one O two, but they didn't have the orange. Um, yeah. And yeah, the, 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 I, I the ten to fourteen, you. you know, we we the ten to fourteen jerseys, which are basically what they have now as their home in a way. Mm-hmm. They're they're really nice. Yeah. Um. So because a one hundred two doesn't have the orange, I'll I'll advance ten to fourteen. There you awesome. go. Okay. Cool. We are we are now in the final four. Matt. Oh, there you go. You okay. 14, 16 versus ten fourteen. So, it's basically so the, the question is, do I want the Winter Classic jersey or not, basically? <laughs> it pretty much, yes. Mm. Yes. I got to go with the 14-16. Uh, I, 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 I have to include the alternate. I, when I got it like uh, done, I had mine done, it was like, oh, this is so cool. They got it right with the alternate. I really like the, this alternate jersey. I have to include it in there. So, yeah, throw it in. Why not? How convenient that my pen dies right then. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got to say, here you go, Johnny, but... Um... <laughs> Pass it through the wall. Woo! <laughs> the 14-16 moves on. Yep. To the All right, Steve, you have 97-01 Ooh. versus 83-97. Oh! It's funny how that works. Oh! Well... A little error in the screen there, but that's we'll, okay. we'll get rid of that. Yep. Well, I this, this is is actually going to be easy, I think, because 9701 has the exact same white and orange. Mm-hmm. It just has the black alternate third jersey. Yes. I think we all agree is phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. So 9701. There you awesome. go. There you go. You're not losing anything by pushing them. Forward. Not at all. All right. Text me. Text me your vote. Uh, okay. 1416 versus... 9701. Oh, 01. I will I will tell you who the winner is. I think it's pretty straightforward, I think, to be honest with you guys. I, yeah. I know who I'm voting for. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I sent it to you in the chat. Got it. Oh there you go. And Johnny I just texted it to you so you should get it shortly. There you go. Yep. Unanimous oh. decision. <laughs> it would be. 9701, right? 9701. Yeah. Is the winner. I agree. It's it's just it's the adding the black and keeping the tradition. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. And you know, and I think what also helps too is the fact that they beat the Penguins in 2000. We talked about that the other a couple of weeks ago. I think it was when Keith Primo. Oh, Winnin didn't Winnin didn't hurt the memory. That's no, of course crazy. not. But I'm just saying, like that helps. You know, I'm just saying that's like a nice little addition to this cake. You know what I mean? Like you just add oh, that yeah. little bit of an ingredient. It's just so cool. Well, so they wore. We were cool. We were yeah. They wore the black jersey. Yeah. In the playoffs, as their road jersey. Yeah. Right? that season yeah yeah and i think all three of us had the black at one point oh yeah right when we were playing roller hockey outside and whatnot so yeah i think oh i had the exact one shown there the lindros yeah i think i had the desjardins one i wouldn't have been surprised if i did didn't you know i had on a black jersey yeah so yeah it was it was unbelievable back then so yeah good tournament johnny i loved it i love the wheel man that's great we got to bring that back more often so the the flyers better listen to us and bring back the 97 to 01 jersey triumvirate there yes. you go yes you bring go. all three of them back and that's what you guys should, you, you might win the chip yeah exactly you go to the cup final. Hey, they they did well in those jersey styles yeah they did mm-hmm. they were perennially among the top the leaders in the conference um we're not going to talk about the fact that we could outspend most teams at that yeah. point. But... <laughs> they were also cool. They were. It was cool to be a Flyers fan because yeah. you had the black and uh, when it was on Fox with the floaty puck and all that. It was cool yeah. to be a Flyers fan. Yeah, it really was. It was a lot you of fun. To go back to those days. Yeah. 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 Nothing and... against the current no, nothing, moment away. Absolutely, absolutely nothing against. No. But you guys know, it was just... like... When you have a, like an Eric Lindros barreling with the puck and with that white jersey at home with the orange and it's like he's got the uh, come on, he's just and bad. and him in black come on, you know it's like give me your... just so okay. awesome to see yeah just so great. Speaking of him, he's going to be coming up soon, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. This closes out episode eighty-seven of Two Noobs Talking, and it will be on to eighty-eight. 
And no yeah, surprise. I wonder, who I, I wonder who wore that in the city of Philadelphia. I have no idea, but we will spoil that for later. Um, I there, there, I, I, it's that it's that All Star Sixer player, isn't it? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Great guy to coming off the bench. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but as always, guys, it's great to be able to talk with you uh, both, uh, and you know, just to have fun and talk about the news of the day. Well, let's go ahead and hit our shameless plugs, shall we, John? Where can people find right. us? Man? man, we're all over the place. We're on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Clapper, who wants us to do live stuff, we're going to figure that out. I'll, I'll buy a, pot, a tripod or something. There you so go. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, us, live. we'll get us yeah. live while we're doing this. We'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. Uh, figure it out. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook Reels. Just kind of look all over for us. Uh, Steve cuts nice videos for us on Facebook, and then I steal them and use his wording, and I put them all over social media. So, and people like that. So I'm going to keep it. doing it. There you go. Yeah, and that points to our uh, main YouTube channel, which is the Two Noobs Talking Podcast. Uh, we ask, of course, if you like, share, subscribe, and get notified whenever our new episodes appear, Wednesday, 7 p.m. local. Uh, and on the audio side, Steve, where can people listen to us? So on the audio side, we are uh, spreading through Podbean, which is like the main body. Love it. And then you have like Amazon Music is the head. Uh-huh. Google Podcasts is the right arm. Apple Podcasts would be the right leg. <laughs> left leg would be uh, iHeartRadio. And Spotify is the disconnected left arm. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Which can't go much above this level. Level, exactly. Hey, on our show notes too, or can be found at Two Noobs Talking at WordPress.com. Links to all of our articles that we reference can be found there. My thanks to John. My thanks to a hurting Steve Murray, but coming off the IL real soon. Uh, it's on to 88, guys. Hey, I'm hey, here, man. On, wait. And you're there. Yeah, you're on the mend. I love it. He's always played hurt. Until then, talk to you all guys next week. Take care. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. That's a great question. What is the long-term effect of too much information? One of the effects is the need to be first, not even to be true anymore.